हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर संकेत पिसाट एंड वेलकम टू द सिक्स एडिशन ऑफ एंडोगाइनी ट्रेनिंग क्विज वेर वी डिस्कस प्रैक्टिकल रियल लाइफ प्रॉब्लम्स एंड देयर सिचुएशंस इन गाइनी एंडोस्कोपी सो फॉर दोज ऑफ यू हु हैव नॉट येट जॉइन बट वुड लाइक टू जॉइन द ग्रुप एंड टेक पार्ट इन द डिस्कशन प्लीज विजिट एंडोगाइनी ट्रेनिंग डॉट कॉम वेर यू विल फाइंड द लिंक ऑन द होम पेज टू जॉइन द व्हाट्सएप डिस्कशन ग्रुप एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो बी अ पार्ट ऑफ द डिस्कशन so before we begin our standard disclaimer that medicine is not an exact science no one knows everything and these are my personal opinions and may be different from published evidence but if you have a difference of opinion please leave your comments in the comment section below the video and we'll be happy to discuss them and if you have an interesting case please send it to us on endogyny training at gmail.com and we'd love to discuss it So with that let us get to the question which was asked a 29 year old lady married since 2 years not able to conceive her treating gynecologist has told her that she will be able to surely open at least one of these two block tubes so do you agree with this advice this was the first question and the second question was uh, she stopped consulting the previous doctor as she was told to sign a pre operative consent form that also included consent for salpingectomy or delinking and the second question was is the doctor justified in taking consent for salpingectomy so let's look at both of these questions firstly the question which was her treating gynecologist that she has told her that she will be able to open at least one of these two tubes and 73% people have replied that they don't agree with this advice so i agree with this uh, majority answer because no one can absolutely guarantee that they will be able to open one of the two block tubes however partly the gynecologist is not wrong in suggesting this answer because uh, among all the hsgs that we do we find that a huge number of them have corneal block purely due to some sort of corneal spasm and at least 9 out of 10 hsgs when we do them we find that in 9 out of 10 patients where tubes have been reported to be blocked uh, at least at a corneal block these tubes are actually open while performing the hysterolaparoscopy so as a calculated guess yes it is okay to tell the patient that mostly we may be able to open these tubes but to surely guarantee that one of the two block tubes can be opened is making a false promise which i definitely would not advise so i agree with the fact that yes there is a high possibility that she may be able to open it but i will not agree with the fact that she can definitely open it so such sort of advice is best not given coming to the second question she stopped consulting the previous doctor as she was told to sign a pre operative consent form that included consent for salpingectomy and the question was whether the doctor is justified in taking consent for salpingectomy who wants tubal patency restored so let's go back and take a look at the hsg film first and if we look at this hsg film we will see that the uterus at least in its shape seems to be okay so this is the outer contour of the uterus which seems to be fine there is no convergence of the wall there is a slight amount of depression of the fundus so maybe a very slightly arcuate uterus but that too may not require treatment of course like we have discussed before the final diagnosis of subseptate versus arcuate can be made only on 3d ultrasound but uh, more or less the cavity seems to be normal also what is seen here is a filling defect so this could probably be an air bubble or it could also be a polyp but uh, this is not it is definitely not related to the um, it could be related to the block tubes if there is a polyp it may be blocking the exit point but there is no such thing on this side so overall the hsg looks okay to me uh, now if we look at this uh, we will see that other than the shape of the uterus we can see that the tube is blocked on this side and is blocked on this side as well the reason that this doctor has probably taken a consent or asked for a consent for salpingectomy is because of the fact that whenever we are operating on a case of hyd- of block tubes there is a good chance that we may find a hydrosalpinx as well this hydrosalpinx may have been missed on the pre operative ultrasound if it has been picked up then of course you can counsel the patient for a delinking or a salpingectomy however if this has been missed and you find this on table then we are faced with a unique situation or a unique dilemma 
what is that dilemma <clears throat> the dilemma is that in such a situation where you are finding a hydrosalpings or an obviously diseased tube inside <clears throat> it is not that because the hydrosalpings is not seen on hsg there may be a corneal block and there may also be a hydrosalpings along with it so she may as well have a hydrosalpings over here at this level but we are not able to see it right now because this corneal end is now blocked however uh, on it on when we do the laparoscopy we may find evidence of a hydrosalpings yes i agree that this should be picked up earlier on an ultrasound but maybe sometimes it does get missed and then you are faced with the unique problem that if you uh, do the delinking or the salpingectomy of the hydrosalpings you cannot do this procedure without the consent of the patient even the fact of going outside the ot taking the consent of the husband the in-laws the mother father or anyone else for that matter can be deemed to be considered illegal it is only the consent of the patient which is considered to be legal and valid and this also has to be a written informed consent which is given in a sound state of mind so consent given by the patient on the ot table also will not will not count as consent if things go bad after the surgery hence for such a patient we will have to abandon the surgery and post her for delinking or salpingectomy at a later date conversely if uh, you do not perform the salpingectomy or delinking the patient and her relatives may well come back and tell you that you could have done the procedure in the same setting and we would have agreed so now this is a problematic situation where either ways you are going to be caught in a trap hence it is best to counsel the patient pre operatively and take her opinion as to if you find the tube to be diseased inside what would she like you to do would she like you to do a delinking and a, or a salpingectomy so that she can directly go ahead for an ivf cycle or natural conception if the other tube is normal or would you just rather have uh, you leave it alone and do nothing to the tube for sentimental reasons or otherwise so that both the patient and the treating doctor are exactly clear about the line of management that has been decided upon and that there is no ambiguity and there is no dissatisfaction later on after the surgery in case such a consent has not been taken remember very well that you may by legally subject the patient to another surgery at the risk of causing her an inconvenience but one cannot do a delinking or a salpingectomy without the patient's explicit informed and valid consent so i hope this discussion has been helpful to you uh, i'll try and post the next quiz and discussion in a few days time uh, until then good night and do enjoy thank you